G'day guys, welcome to the No Boner Build. Ray Berger issued us all a challenge. Take a Nomad or similar casting. Somehow amalgamate it to a bone shaker. Oh, evil man. Right, so here we go. I noticed that these lines here matched up quite nicely with the bone shaker bonnet. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut it off and away we go. I'm going to take this back section off and we're going to chuck it on the back. We're going to try and make ourselves a junkyard rat. Right, so let's get building. Starting off by cutting off the back panels. So gently cutting in. Just going to check how much I've cut through. A bit more of a cut. Now I tend to snap these panels off, but I find it gives me a nice edge for gluing. It's the quick hit with a file and it's good to go. There we go. Right. Quick mock up, make sure everything fits. Lovely. Yeah, I'll learn to show the camera. Anyway, bit of blue tack. Make sure she's all looking good. Adjust things around, have a general look, get an idea of the layout of the car. Oh, look at that, the skull fits. Okay, so I've built half the car already. Let's do the other half, shall we? You can see here how basically I use the super glue like a well, really. So I'll show you how we go about that process front and back. Similar thing. I don't think I show the back actually, but I'll show you the front. Hey, right, here we go. This is my old cutting mat, so I'm a bit messy on this one. I used to do this technique a bit. You line it up, drop your super glue on the mat straight away, just because I'm a rough bugger. And here we go. Right, pick up my pick. Get my panel roughly in place. Bit of glue. Bit of a bit of a hinge tack, basically bit of the old spray and I don't think I actually liked where this was so I moved it again not that you can see because there's my lovely big hands so we'll just re-tack it on I'm happy with it there obviously so there we go tacked now we're gonna fill in that gap and as you can see I just sort of build up that build it up now we get inside here and we really just fill up that gap. There's usually just a little bit of spray so you get a sort of a skin forming and away we go we just fill it all up boom 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 and spray that off and I just clean me pick off with me lighter. Obviously take a little bit of care so you don't burn the house down but it just burns off. Let it burn out quickly wipe it off with your fingers hot clearly Right, so here we go, at a million times an hour, I'm just going to chuck some axle tubes in, we've all seen this technique done, so blah blah blah, there we go, look at that, god I wish I could actually work that fast, anyway, there we go, bit of the old glue, I'm locking these back axles up and the front axles up, this is not going to be a roller because she's going to sit quite low, quick test fit, there we go, and we're going to notch out the back so she sits nice and low. So here we go, just notching her out. Boom, test fit, styrene time. Ha <laughs> ha, you knew this would be coming up. So new mat, so tray. And same technique, just cut a bit of styrene, a couple of panels, chuck them in. Right, so here we are. Front axles are in, back axles are in. I've changed back wheels because I lost one. Yay, they don't roll. Um, painted it grey, chucked a tank on the back, built a bumper, made it purposely look rough. There's the body, she's starting to take shape. There we go, bit of a railway iron on the back. Get that real junkyard rat feel going on. Right, <clears throat> into painting. Now, what self-respecting outlaw speed shop fan would I be if I did not use this? Oh, here we go. Enjoy quite some amount of lead belcher going down. So I use this just as a basic base to give me my steel look. 
bit over the skull there, that horrible bloody skull, I hate that thing, seriously. But there we go, just chuck it down. It's just gonna give us a, a basic steel coat. Chuck a bit on the floor there. There we go, Ch paint all the steel panels, or the ones I want to look like steel panels. And I'm also gonna paint some on the body to look like just sort of areas of rough steel. So here we go, just chuck a couple of bits here and there. Mainly around the welds and in the corners. And onto the typhus corrosion. So I'm just going to chuck this down again. This is just a base, so I'm just chucking it down just where I want the base of, you know, the, the bulk of my rusts to be. Outlining panels and so on. Again, I'm going to get better at showing the camera what I'm doing, guys. Um, you'll see me wiping it off with a cotton bud here and there. And that's because I'm really just going for the texture of the paint. I don't want the paint so much, but I want the texture. Um, you'll see that technique along this front bumper in just a second. There we go there. And that just leaves behind a little bit of colour and the nice rough texture of the Typhus Corrosion. There we go, chuck it all over. Not really much more I can tell. I think we all know how to use a paintbrush and paint. Um, so here we go. I just, I really wash it over the back and then I buff it out with my cotton bud. That cotton bud's already been used a bit. And then just outline areas again. Right, <clears throat> chuck it over the front. Paint the inside. Yay. Bit of brown there. Bit of simulate some leather. Right, onto the riser rust. We all know about the dry brushing of this stuff and how effective it is with the typhus corrosion. Using the back of my hand as a palette there. So again, we just slap it down. It adds that, that fresher rust. Always clean your brush, guys. So here we are. That's where we're at with that right now. So she's starting to look good. Here's our insides. Oh, nice and rusty. Starting to, start to come together. I'm starting to see my vision. Yeah. Right, onto the fancy stuff. Bit of engine grime to start with. This is going to give that look of crap that's just come down over time. So you paint it along the panel line there. I've chosen to use the panel line. You can paint it wherever. Just a nice line along. Leave it to dry for a bit. Um, and then I use a bit of thinners and then just stroke it down. Once it's dried, just pull it down gently. Bit of a cotton bud to take the excess away and just pull it down. Once you've got it looking as streaky as you want, leave it there, same on the back. Just pull it down over the panel. Okay. Now if the camera wasn't blurry, you'd see the effect that looks, it just looks like that, that darker crap that's come down over time. Now we're gonna grab a lighter one and we're gonna actually go above all that. So you can see me putting it along the top of the door here, around the window and just a bit down the weld line. I'll explain that maybe. But we just pull this down once it's dried off again, same thing, bit of thinners. We pull it right down over the darker stuff and it just looks effective. Uh, there what I'm doing there is actually darkening it and later on you'll see that just gives us a nice bit of a weld line. So there we go. I think you can sort of see how it just blends this together and give us a, gives us those two tones, bit of fresh, bit of old. This is going to excess for this scale, guys. We don't need to do this, but it's just a bit of fun to, to show you. Right, so we're gonna do the same with rust. And we're gonna go even heavier this time. So I'm starting with the dark one. Again, we all know rust's got several different shades. So we're chucking some nice dark ones right along those same panel lines. And we're really layering this stuff in, guys. And we're gonna go on the front one too. There we go, it's dried off. Now I'm going to use my cotton bud to pull it down. So I'll let it dry to a point, and then I'm pulling it down, let it dry right off, coming back in with the brush and the thinners and just flicking it where I want it. Cleaning a bit off, and away we go. There we go. It really is, you, you can just play around with the stuff, and you can see here I've used what's on the cotton bud to start staining those rear panels. Move it around a bit, give it a bit of texture and a bit of roughness. All right, I think you can see what's going on there. We've got start and back here. 
and we just keep pulling it along as long as we keep that paintbrush wet with a bit of thinners and away we go right we're using some lighter stuff here we go you can see the different colors right there and how basically how that's going to simulate our rust same technique again guys just paint it where we want it so this lighter one i tend to paint along the top panels and just in areas where i feel it would have been a bit more exposed and we've got some fresher rust right, there we go pulling it along playing around with it let it dry off clean around you know play it with cotton buds just manipulate it however you want great stuff for that there we go i tend to make those quite more obvious strips Right, so I changed from the GoPro to my phone, so it's a bit washed out, but I think you can get the effect a bit clearer there. Yeah, so it takes a bit to, to focus in sometimes, but we're starting to see how, how this effect actually makes it look quite aged. I should mention too, I'm sealing this in between each layer with um, matte clear. Right, a bit of airbrush thinners. For the weathering powders okay um, I've seen a few people having struggles with these so what I use I use airbrush cleaner sorry not thinners cleaner and I use that as a medium to help me get it on the car and I really just use them in areas where I want a drier looking rust at the end of it goes down looking a bit wet but it will dry as a powder because oddly enough that's what it is. Uh, the cleaner just helps to get it down, makes it a bit more mobile. Um, you can paint it on and it seems to evaporate off. I've found the thinner doesn't work as well for some reason the cleaner does. So just like everything else we just slap it down. That matte clear helps to grip the powders a bit too. And yeah we just brush it around um, areas where we want it. Well, I've got different shades of it um, and away you go. Oh yeah, cool, lovely, powders, powdery. Again, it's just another layer of effect to chuck on. Um, yeah, away we go. Anyway, I was talking to me old mate Funky over there at Scale Street Garage and he suggested that maybe I tie all this trimming in. This is not quite his idea, but this is what I went with and I happen to agree with him. Very good idea, Funky. So I'll just add a bit of steel buffing and um, with the decal on the door there is gone, just buffer up with a bit of steel there. Those decals guys, um, 2000 grit wet, wet and dry, make sure it's wet and just quickly rub your tempo. Look at that, all painted up, ready to go. Reveal time. Here she is. A dirty, disgusting, rusted out junkyard rat. There you go, Ray. I hope that's what you're after. Um, yeah, cool. Next time, guys, we will hit the styrene. Um, that's going to be fun. Cool. Right, guys. Well, been fun doing this. Um, I hate video editing. We'll do it again. Take care, guys. <laughs>